for today is from Karen Gilroy, honoring Gretchen's graduation with her associate's degree in allied health science. Blessings to Gretchen. And now, our music. Right? This is the face of God. So please feel free to join um, in the chorus. It's kind of like a mantra, so I'll announce the word. And uh, if, you, if you're uh, so feeling moved to do that, you're welcome. today um, sharing uh, two quotes with you. I'll move out of the way in just a moment. Uh, I just want to give you, so I'm going to read each one of those twice and I'm going to give you a moment to be still. And I want you to go within and see, you know, how do they speak to you? How does it relate to what is going on in your life right now? What comes alive as you read it? Is there one that might speak to you more than the other? So here we go. So the first one is by St. Francis de Sales. Have patience with all things, but chiefly have patience with yourself. 
Do not lose courage in considering your own imperfections, but instantly set about remind, re, rem, remedy, remedying them. Every day, begin the task anew. It's a good thing I get to read it again. <laughs> breathing in and breathing out. Have patience with all things, but chiefly have patience with yourself. Do not lose courage in considering your own imperfections, but instantly set about remedying them. Every day, begin the task anew. And our second one, sometimes what a person need, needs is not a brilliant mind that speaks, but a patient heart that listens. Sometimes what a person needs is not a brilliant mind that speaks, but a patient heart that listens. So does one of these speak to you and in what way does it speak to you? Or do both of them speak to you? So Paula, we have Paula. And in the chat, uh, if you'd like to share how it speaks to you. I don't know if it'd be too hard to bring them in or do you want me to just have them put it in the chat? In the chat, okay. Paula. Uh -huh. Good morning. Good morning. The first one spoke to me very deeply, and then the second one spoke to me also. And what kept ruminating into my mind and my heart was self-love. Mm -hmm. It all starts within. So be patient with myself, the little child in me, the adult woman, whomever, but always find that love and understanding. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, that what someone needs is a brilliant mind. Be patient. Mm. Be patient with yourself. Yeah. And it's love and acceptance. And that's what helps me get through my days recently. Loving myself. And I'll say this, I coined this so many times, with all my warts and pimples. Yes, <laughs> all your warts and pimples. All our warts and pimples. Yes. It's my human experience, and it's fine. It's all part of the divine design, the plan. So. Yes starts with self-love and then you're able to love because yes. that love is in your heart and that's what you emanate out to everyone you meet and you see the love in them and they see the love in you it's love god beautiful. is love mm -hmm. <laughs> yes thank you beautiful Having patience and self-love for oneself, warts and all, pimples, bumps, whatever it is. And then in that space, we can listen with compassion. Thank you, Paul. And patience. Is there anything in the chat? Anybody else here? Does anybody have one that speaks to them more than the other? You don't have to get into the detail. Linda. Thank you. Uh, the first one sp speaks to me for because I keep thinking about how I'm impatient with myself and then to forgive myself for being impatient with myself. Mm. <laughs> um, and as Paula spoke of the self love and letting that go, I think that's the challenge that I have for, my <clears throat> for myself at the moment. And, you know, it speaks on remedying. And I think that's the solution is letting, letting the judgment, the self-talk, the criticism in my own mind or spirit, then just mm -hmm. letting, letting, that, letting that go and being patient with myself. So yeah. that really 
Beautiful, right? Showing up and, and in our imperfection and, and embracing it, what it's here to teach us, but loving and knowing our wholeness and in the midst of it all. So thank you, that's beautiful. Anything in the chat? Okay, thanks. So patience, you know, as Paula shared um, and, and Linda shared, so there's first one, you know, we know we, it's a both end, right? We talk about polarities. It's we're not in break, you know, our power of order asks us to walk between the poles of a both end, right? So it's patience for self, patience for others, right? It's a both end. And so we have the ability to cultivate that, which we're going to get into in just a moment. So how would you define patience? You can put it in the chat. Is it one of those tricky words? We know it, but can we define it? So so we know that we're being it. How do I know I am being the attribute of patience? How do I know it? Paula. When I am in a place where I'm willing to be in a place of understanding. Awesome. Um, Yeah. Beautiful. Understanding. What else? Anything in the chat? Heather. Hold on, Heather. Heather, hold on. So people can hear. Sorry. That's okay. Um, may, not having the answer in that moment, but allowing time for that yes. answer to come through. Yes, when we want an answer and we want it now, and, and allowing whatever time that is to be present, right? For it to unfold. Beautiful. Anything in the chat yet? I just want to make sure I'm being inclusive. No pressure there at home. <laughs> okay. So let's take a look. Um, We are resuming our series based on Matthew Kahn's book, All for Love, Um, the 10 attributes of transformative power of holding space. Um, And before we get to what he defines that attribute as, I wanna, he really speaks more about cultivating it. So I wanna, look at what are some of the common definitions that we might be operating under. So I took a look at Merriam-Webster and it says, the definition of patience is the capacity to endure what is difficult or disagreeable without complaining. The Cambridge Dictionary, the ability to wait or to continue doing something despite difficulties or to suffer without complaining or becoming annoyed. Now we're gonna move into the metaphysical uh, definition of patience uh, written in the revealing word, written by co-founder of Unity, Charles Fillmore. And I want you to notice the difference of that than the two above, okay? An attitude of mind or consciousness characterized by poise, inner calmness, and quiet endurance, especially in the face of trying conditions. How does that differ for you? Does it have a different vibe? How is it a different vibe for you? Awesome, Steve. It takes on what you're being asked to embody rather than we're just not gonna be annoyed and angry, (laughs) right? It is being in that place, it's a conscious awareness, a state of conscious mind where we are poised inner calmness or we may feel the rumblings of discord but we choose again, right? Take that deep breath in, center ourselves, and that quiet endurance. So patience is an aspect endurance. What, What spiritual, power does that remind us of? Endurance. Perseverance Perseverance is another descriptor of it. Our spiritual power that starts with an S. 
not Superman, <laughs> strength, right? The inner fortitude and strength, right? Quiet endurance, especially in the face of trying circumstances, right? Acceptance, sure. Whatever is here in the now. Yep. That it's for the highest good. Excellent. You are, you are saying the rest of the talk, Paula. There you go. <laughs> you, get, you get how many gold stars today? <laughs> so as I mentioned just a couple of seconds ago, that patience is one of the attributes that Matthew Kahn mentions in his book, All for Love, the transformative power of holding compassionate space. And so we have gone through the attributes of encouragement, of validation, of reverence, of mercy, and worthiness. And today we're going to do a deeper dive into the attribute of patience. And so this is what Matthew shares about patience. Patience is the time you spend showing genuine interest toward another person's reality. And notice it's a both end, so I put yourself, because you can put yourself in there, right? Having patience with yourself for where you are, right? And patience gives others, or you, the space to be exactly where they are in their journey, since so many people are far too steeped in the intensity of their own pain to know how you would prefer them prefer them to see you or treat you, right? How many times do we take things personally because of that? And so the voice of patience or the embodiment of patience says, you have all the time you need, right? It, it speaks of that even though, how many of you might have, you know, that saying, like the, the voice of impatience would say, are we there yet? Am I there yet? Are we there yet? Right? Or I can't believe that's coming up again. I thought I de dealt with that, you know, years ago. Am I still dealing with issues with my sister, my brother, my mother, my father, my neighbor? Anybody relate to that? Or it can say, are you still talking about that? Jeez, still angry? Like you need to get over it. Maybe you don't say it out loud. Maybe you do, or maybe you think it. Or when somebody's sharing or you're noticing somebody in pain and suffering, and it's the same pain and suffering, you're like, hey, wanting to be an honest helper giver, you know, you should try X, Y, Z. And then you get frustrated because they don't try X, Y, or Z, right? Come on already. Well, you're never going to get it. I'm never going to get it. Or impatience can also say, I can't believe you don't understand me by now. You don't get what I like, what I want, what I need. How many times do I have to tell you? Any of those sound familiar to you? Yeah. And so we're going to look at five things that empower us to cultivate patience. The first two are to bear witness and walking the polarities of oneness and uniqueness. So when we bear witness, we are doing that as a clean slate. And that's really difficult. Right? That is where the inner work of daily work of know thyself, being in touch with your own feelings, your own emotions, your own story, so that you know if the top five is starting to play, oh, there that goes again, I'm going to breathe in and be clear and be centered. So it's an objective bear witness, right? Just being that observer, breathing, trusting that as I breathe and center within, that I am just a clean slate to the best of my ability because we can never, according to Matthew Kahn, we can never know what the unique lived experience of another is truly like, even if it's a family member, 
that you believe you know really well. We can never encapsulate another person's struggles. Yes, we may have all lost a parent, a father, or a mother, right? But maybe the lived experience of that loss and the journey that someone had in their relationship, it can never be the same that we have had. And when we talk about embracing oneness and uniqueness, so oneness, right? We are all one. What is in one, what is in the whole? Meaning that we cannot be separated from the divine. We're not, even though, you know, in the physical world, your body's there, your body's over there. We know that we're vibrational beings, that whatever happens here within my own consciousness can ripple out and affects everybody else. We know we are all made from the same creative divine essence. But oneness does not mean sameness. And so often, you know, we feel comfortable with like-minded people. And yes, that's our tribe, right? And we go and we, you know, support one another and we're spiritually fed and all of that. But what we sometimes do is we don't get that uniqueness is also spiritual in the sense that each one of us is a divine, unique expression of God. And that each soul journey, yes, if you believe spiritually, we're all here to evolve, to awaken, but to know how we do that and our life's journey is gonna vary from person to person, right? Whether we take a Concorde jet, whether we take a slow boat to China, whether we walk through a minefield, each one of us, our journey is different. And sometimes we want to judge it as wrong, as not right, same difference, or not fast enough. So it's that embracing of that. And this attribute of patience came powerfully to Matthew Kahn in 2020. And he shares in his book, it was May of 2020, and it was where the world, most of the world, bared witness to the brutal murder of George Floyd, where the policeman, Derek Chauvin, had his foot on the neck of George Floyd. As three other policemen watched, and as people watched, yelling, and so we saw that clip over and over, followed by looting that occurred, violence that occurred, not only in Minneapolis, but across cities all over the nation. And like many of us, we were horrified. He said a deep pain. He felt a deep pain. He's in, he calls himself an empath, a very deep pain. And we all, right, we are all wired to feel things and how much we allow is dependent on us because we can sometimes get lost in it, but that which we don't allow to process becomes stuck energy within our own body. And so as he watched, you know, and he saw the chanting of, uh, of peaceful protests of the Black Lives Matter, and then people who didn't have tolerance or patience for that chanting back, all lives matter. And, 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 and not getting, because somebody says Black Lives Matter, does it mean that it discounted all lives, right? And so he was feeling all this angst and he said, being the spiritual teacher and um, healer and author that he is, a lot of times he will post something on social media to be a source of comfort or inspiration. And so what came to him was a Martin Luther King quote, and it is this, darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. And then what happened was there were several people, numerous people who took offense to that thinking that he was speaking against the peaceful protests. And one such comment that was posted was, we are not just going to get over it because it makes your white privilege uncomfortable. 
And he's like, no, 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 that's not what I'm meaning. And you don't understand. And he was so engaged in like what was going on with him. And they, you know, they didn't understand and blah, blah, blah. And then he just went to his knees and he sobbed and he had an epiphany. Yes, that might have been my intention. He's like, was I just trying to, you know, put spiritual, you know, pink love and joy out there? Was I not trying to listen? He just did a very deep dive. And what he came to realize was, yes, I'm an empath and I may know what suffering is. I may know what it's like to be bullied because I was bullied as a young kid but I never in this life was a black bodied individual and I can never know. Like I don't know the fright of a policeman coming and I feel like, oh, I wanna be friendly, but that's not the experience of black, black, especially black men. And so he began to look deeper and deeper and it moved him into saying, I wanna understand, Paula spoke about it. How do you know if you're being patient? seeking understanding and one common reframe he would be you know in being compassionate and showing up is he would say i understand i understand how many of you have said that when somebody is sharing about their grief right because we all can relate to grief we all can relate yes but what he suggests and putting it in your own way is to move from saying i understand to please Help me better understand what I have never faced and may never encounter. Now, you may not use those exact words, but in your own way, I want to understand more. Please tell me more about that. How's that? How is it for you? Please understand, you know, I'm here and I could just be a presence listening. And then Patience means being in the here and now, as Heather spoke about, allowing whatever time it needs, right? How much time some, do we spend thinking about the past or thinking about the future, right? Sometimes in the meditation, if you do in the meditation, as Paula spoke about, things pop up. Maybe it's about the future, what you have to do. Maybe it's about the past. Maybe it's right here now, right? That's what monkey mind does. And instead of fighting it, it's just be here now with it. Instead of trying to fight it, thinking that there's the best way to do something. And so two statements he shares in that is to be here and to be now, to be present, to accept whatever is, is an affirmation now. You know, when we hear black lives matter, all lives matter, you know, oh, Kamala Harris has all the answers, Trump has the answers, and then we begin this bickering as to who is the right and perfect person. Now, I'm not saying not to follow your moral and spiritual heart centered, but what if instead of saying for an outcome that the affirmation could be, may all that is occurring unfold for the well-being of all? Take that in. May all that is occurring unfold for the well-being of all. What do you notice about that? Anybody? In the chat? Do you find it comforting? Not? Not really? It's okay. De Deb, go ahead. All right, so what it, what, what be here now says to me is that everything that is going on, whether it's good, bad, ugly, beautiful, it's unfolding, it's happening for my good. It is about the what's so of the moment. I don't understand it, yet it is happening for everyone because we are all one. And it is all for the well-being. That's it. Beautiful. Thank you. Anything else, Paula, did you want to add? No, she basically said what I was going okay, to say. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Divine mind, alive and well. And then when you're with someone, you know, a statement. You know, he says, 
we are in no rush, you can say, I am in no rush, please take your time. Your body can say that, your presence can say that, or you can physically say that, right? And so the last one I wanted to um, talk about is allow inpatience to be your teacher. Right? I love this quote. Heal so that you can hear what is being said without the filter of your wounds. Inpatience sometimes comes up because it's uncomfortable. Now, I'm not saying people saying unkind things is is always going to be comfortable, but when you're grounded in truth, how many of you have had that experience with someone that has been challenging or who somehow knew where all your wires were, I mean, triggers were inside, and then suddenly, there you were, calm, centered, in that compassionate space. So what does it mean to allow, when I'm finding I'm losing my patience, what is it, what's coming up for me? What emotions are arising? What thoughts are occurring? Where am I feeling that in my body? What does my body want to speak to me about this? I'm not talking about abusive and violent situations. That's not what I'm talking about talking about discord and uncomfortability or disagreement, right, in any kind? And are there the old stories that pop up, right? Taking something personally, you're so busy wanting what you want that you cannot be present because it's all about you in that moment, right? There's no give and take or, or being present. And then we begin that projection. And then, of course, we can remember to not take it personally. So I want to share a personal experience of this, allowing impatience to be my inner teacher. And I have my great teachers in my life. And a lot of them happen to be my family members. (laughs) And so it was, I don't know how many weeks ago, several weeks ago, and it was one of those oppressive, humid days. Um, it was a Monday. And the humidity uh, seems to make the pain in my hip area intensify. Uh, last Saturday, I had went to a specialist, have been on my journey, and some of you know that, in what was supposedly an issue with my lower back turned out to be severe degeneration of the hip joint and uh, the surrounding area. So after going to uh, a couple of doctors and landing with someone I like, I'm I'm having a scheduled hip replacement on November 21st. So I invite you in in holding me in this healing divine idea. So that's the background to know sometimes that pain that was intensified that day from the humidity. And so it was a Monday and I was, had gone to lunch with my son and my mom. It was a nice lunch and so I'm driving home and there's lots of traffic, it's Monday. That's my day of respite. And, um, you know, I have shared, you know, in my desire to walk the polarities of balancing self-care with care of others, you know, I have shared with my mom, you know, because she likes to have mon- Monday to be her honey-do list for me, you know, of all the things that she's wanting me to do. And so I've asked her, please, you know, can we wait to another day? I just want this to be a day, you know. And I've also reached out to my brothers to say, hey, I could use some help. My mother's self-sufficient. She does have eye loss, macular degeneration, her hearing. You know, she's self-sufficient in the house, but she needs to get around. She can't drive, all those things. So, you know, I've reached out to my brothers. Hey, I need your help. You know, the doctors, you know, you could pick her up, take her out for dinner. You know, all those things. I need your help. I need your help. Now, just because you ask for it doesn't mean they're all going to run at your door and do it, you know? So here I am in the car on some Monday, and I'm feeling kind of crappy. And I'm driving, and she's like, 
Angela, she says, um, you know, meantime, traffic all around, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, you know, I really need you. Um, I need you. Could you please schedule me for, you know, I need to get blood work done. The doctor, you know, when your brother took me, blah, blah, blah. And, and so I'm like, well, can you ask so-and-so to do that? And she's like, well, and she went on this litany and then she went into this drama thing and it was touching. I just reacted. So impatience came to visit me. And so as I went back to look at it in my journaling, the story I was creating was my mother values my brother's time more than my time. My mother doesn't see that I'm having this pain and this suffering. Oh, my brothers are self-absorbed, you know, the whole family thing that, yes, I've dealt with this and burned it and here it is. But anyway, it's a deeper level. And so I'm like, oh. and then I remember her sharing with me, Angela, I don't know what it is, but when I'm with you, I feel safe, I feel calm, I like when you take me someplace. Now, I can make that a BS story or I can make it be a truth. It's up to me, right, from my own projection. And I also know my mother suffers from major anxiety. So even though I told her, let's not talk about this on Monday, if there's something brewing for my mother, there's like no off button. Like, you can ask Matt, <laughs> right? You know, and so it's like, oh my gosh, I was seeing it from another perspective rather than the story I was creating around it. And then warmth came. Now, it doesn't mean I can't ask somebody to go do it if I choose to. It doesn't mean I can't schedule it when I want to. But what I got in touch with was the crap, the impatience was here to teach me. What happens is more compassion and understanding has arisen, and it allows me to be present in a connected way, getting rid of all that stuff. And yes, have I worked on this for a long time? Yes. But here it was again, pimples and bumps and warts, Paula, were showing its head, and I was in that place to say, okay, I'm ready to listen at a deeper level. And so as we come to a close, we can see that this works, embodying it for ourselves, where we are, embodying it for others, allowing others to be where they are in their own journey. And so these five ways I just like to summarize before we go into meditation, to bear witness objectively without projecting, to be able to walk the poles of embracing oneness and knowing the unique journey of every soul. Seek to understand by asking, I want, can you tell me more? I want to understand more your, your, your experiences. Be here now, not in the past, not in the present, wishing something away, wanting to press the easy button. I wanted that sometimes, okay? and allowing in patience when it shows up to be your teacher. What is it really wanting you to understand and learn? And so as we take a deep breath together, let us go within. Breathing in, I am consciously aware of the in-breath. And breathing out, I am consciously aware of the breath that flows. Noticing the breath as an inlet and an outlet, the ever expansiveness of the flow of life, the flow of God, the aliveness of the spirit of Shakti, of energy by whatever name you call it. And with each in breath and out breath, 
Allow yourself to journey inward, being the witness, witness to your body and noticing whatever sensations are most alive within your body. And breathing, breathing, breathing into those places, offering words of compassion. I see you, I hear you, I love you. Noticing the beauty and the intelligence of your divine, holy body temple. Noticing its warts, its beauty, its magnificence. And knowing wholeness is something that is unchangeable. It is the true you, deep within, call it soul, call it spirit, call it true self, divine nature. And breathing into your heart, sensing the breath flowing in and out of your heart, as if the breath is flowing with every beat of your heart, every pulse of your heart is alive as you allow your heart chakra to open, 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 open. Be present to whatever is alive, being the patient presence to any visitor, be it grief, be it joy, love, anger, whatever is visiting you in this moment, greet it as a gift from above, from the divine, here, calling you home, calling you home to your wholeness, And as you breathe in and out, ask the wisdom of your unified heart-mind. What is impatience here to teach me? Where am I being called to embody patience in my life? As I listen in the stillness, And allowing the voice of wisdom to speak to me, whether it is now or in that divine right, perfect time. I stand poised, calm, centered in the here and now, loving what is, embracing myself, with compassion and mercy. Take all the time you need, dear one. And now calling to mind an individual who would you like to hold? Dear one, take all the time you need For I seek to understand, and I walk in love, compassion, and patience. 
Namaste, dear one. And breathing in and breathing out, breathing in and breathing out, sensing that breath, the flow of the in-breath and the out-breath, the patience we give to ourselves and we share with one another the flow of life, the dance of it all. Taking that deep breath in and I invite you to rub your hands together, placing them over your heart. I love you. Say it together, I love you. And now rubbing your hands again and placing them outward to one another here in our Zoom space and beyond. I love you. Namaste. Have a blessed week.